This is a tutorial on Cisco Packet Tracer multi-user mode. Very handy mode. It allows you as an instructor to set up a, a network on your version of Packet Tracer. And then the students can connect up uh, to your Packet Tracer through the local network and connect up to your whatever circuit you have. So uh, this part right here I'm going to talk about first is the multi-user setup on the instructor side. and. Uh, um, one of the things you should know is you should allow packet tracer local firewall access. I believe that'll help. Uh, the other uh, point is that all versions of packet tracer have to be the same. They're not backwards compatible, right? So I have version 7.3 here. Uh, if I, I tried it earlier as 7.22 as a client, it would not connect. So what the fir first thing you do is you create a small network. Uh, uh, this is an example network. I have a PC, uh, address 172.16.234.101. So if I click on here, I've manually set a static address just for this demonstration purpose. And I've connected up to port uh, FA0 slash 24 of a 2960 switch, doing nothing special at all. It's just acting as a switch. And uh, so now I have a network and I want to allow students to connect to it. So I go down to here, it's the multi-user connection cloud, put it up here, uh, click on it, and the connection type is incoming for the instructor. Uh, you can use a global multi-user password, which is Cisco, but I'll put a Cisco password in here anyhow. Right. So now anyone who connects to my uh, uh, com packet tracer will have to use the password Cisco. All right, so up here under extensions is your multi-user mode. Uh, very first thing is we're gonna do a listen. And under listen, you have different options. Let's see if I'll move this up here. Is uh, by default, it's usually ask for a prompt. Um, if you have many students trying to connect, it's a pain in the butt. So I always just say uh, existing remote networks always accept and new remote networks always accept. Here's the password again. Uh, these are the ports that you're listening. Uh, my computer local LAN port is uh, 0 0.104, 192.160.104. And uh, it's listening on port 38,000. So, okay, so that's set up. So now we've got uh, our incoming listening we've got our password set up next what we want to do is share ports so what we have is uh, here's our switch what we want to do is share the ports on it and so I go to extensions multi-user port visibility so when I go to port visibility I can now select my switch um, this one will select all ports or what I want to do is I'll just select a a handful of ports. Right, so now we have a handful of ports selected and now we're basically waiting. All right, so this is the client side of Cisco multi-user. So what I have is a, a, again a very simple network. Uh, I have a switch zero and I have PC zero, right? A PC zero is given an address on the same network as on the instructor side, 172.16.234.1. 102, it's connected up to port FA0 slash 15. Uh, now what I do is I bring up the multi-user port up here. And uh, I click on it and I say it's outgoing. So this is an outgoing connection. One of the things you'll see is that uh, we have our peer address. I've already used this, so basically it remembered it from last time. Normally it says localhost. So I've put in the peer address of the instructor's computer. Uh, network name, peer network name. This is what your student's name will appear on the instructor's cloud when it goes up. So I'm going to just call it my laptop. I'm working from my laptop. Uh, and, that. and the password is Cisco with a capital C. Let's see if this works. So I connect and it didn't work. Uh, mainly what I haven't done is on switch zero, I haven't shared any ports. So I'll go to multi-user port visibility and I'll say I'm allowing these five. Go back here, put in the password again. Let's see if it's lowercase c, 
and I'm connected. All right. So now I'm connected to the instructor's computer, and now I have to do a physical connection. So I'll go down here, and I'm going to use a crossover because it's a switch to a switch. And I'll connect up here connect up to here. Now see this, this is switch one on the instructor's computer. And we'll see if this connects up here. Just give us our 50 seconds. In the meantime, we'll check here. Yep, I've got the right IP address. Um, I'll open up a command prompt and I should be able to ping the PC on the instructor's computer, which was 101. I'm still waiting for it to turn green. I should have put the port fast on there. Okay, let's see what happens. And I'm connected and I'm pinging to the instructor's computer. So we have connect connectivity. So what I'll do is, is I'll disconnect here. And then what I'll do is I'll go to the instructor's computer and see what happens on it and its end when someone connects up to it. So I'll say disconnect. All right, so now I'm back on the instructor's PC. Uh, one of the things you'll see is that uh, this is my desktop computer. I've got a very large monitor, high resolution monitor. And I'm trying to get the, uh, just for the video's sake, the same resolution between my laptop and my monitor here. So we see a difference in the quality of the graphics. And that. Um, so this is the instructor's side, multi-user mode. What we want to see is what happens when a uh, student connects up to it. So I'm just going over to my laptop and I'm going to connect up. Here we go. And, and there you see my laptop is now connected to it. And this is what the instructor sees. Uh, identification as laptop was a peer network. Um, we're going to have to wait our little 50 seconds here to get this connection up. Do the spanning tree, and then we should be able to ping. So I got my command prompt up here. I'll ping 172.16.234.102, and let's see if this is up yet. Yeah, yeah, it's up. So, boom, and it works. Simple as that. You can make much more complex networks than this one. You can put routers. Uh, you can have this guy as normally what I do is on the instructor's side, I add a DHCP server on, on my switch. Um, and that allows the students to connect up as if this was a service provider. And then you can build up complete networks. You can have uh, all sorts of things here. You can have firewalls or you can, sorry, not firewalls, I was going to say servers. I usually put a web server up so that way the students have to connect through their packet tracer, through the local network, into my computer, and then they can get the information off of a, a web server, a page, or something like that, just to make it interesting. Or even uh, put email servers and DNS servers up in, in this. Very simple to do, very powerful. It's a lot of fun in the classroom also. Uh, what happens is, uh, what I find is I'm teaching a classroom and I'm looking down, everyone has laptops and they're all looking at us and I'm saying, how can you utilize all that technology that's in that classroom? This is one way to do it. It, it forces the students to use Packet Tracer, make a circuit, and then you can actually, I've run uh, router RIP labs on this, so that way every student would have a little, uh, uh, their own network running router RIP, and what they could do is uh, find out about everybody else's network, and you can have them set up a little uh, uh, web page on their server under Packet Tracer, because Packet Tracer does have uh, servers here. And in the server, uh, some of the services are, where is our web page? Here it is, right? And you can turn that on, and you can actually uh, add files into here and change these files, and that. So that'll be another video. All right, and that's it for this one.